The PodMod kits are now in stock and shipping. If you've already ordered a kit, you should receive it within two to three weeks, and it'll be time to modify your camera. Now, the process of installing the modification parts is complex and requires utmost care and caution. It's important that you follow these steps exactly as shown, otherwise you could cause permanent damage to your camera. By proceeding with this modification, you understand that your camera's warranty will be void. Any action you decide to perform to your camera is at your own risk. Remember, there is no warranty coverage for these self-install mod kits. I'd strongly advise that you watch this video in full before proceeding. If there are any steps that you're not comfortable undertaking yourself, please research the mod install service options provided by Colari Vision. You can read about these options at this link. So the first thing to do is to ensure that your mod kit has all the parts required. Open it up and you should find the aluminium panel for the V-mount battery, along with five Allen keys. On the next layer, we have the silver assembly panel and in the tray of parts, the tilt hinge for the display, along with a plastic bag with the hinge tension inserts, one plastic panel, the V-mount locking mechanism. There's also one additional Allen key and a small Phillips head screwdriver the ribbon cable assembly for the display, along with this small ribbon cable adapter, and this small scalpel knife. On the next layer, you should find the back panel for the display, and in the final layer, we have the main display enclosure, along with 15 bolts and one plastic prying tool. Under the display enclosure, there should also be an alcohol cleaning pad. To complete this modification, you'll also need a hairdryer, as well as four containers or bowls, to organize your parts through the process. For this modification, I'll primarily be working on a Pocket 4K, but I'll also show a Pocket 6K where they differ. So firstly, this step is the same for the 4K and the 6K. Take the small scalpel knife, carefully open it, it's sharp, and gently insert the sharp point of the knife into the gap along the top of this cover here to pry it off. Repeat this technique for the tally light cover, inserting the sharp point of the knife into the gap underneath the cover. It is easy to slip and scratch the camera on this step, so take your time. To remove the rubber grip, use the plastic prying tool. Insert the flat end underneath the grip and gently push it further beneath the grip to peel it away from the glue. Some of the glue may remain stuck to the camera, don't worry about this. Now, use the pointy end of the plastic spudger tool to remove the small rubber diffuser in the tally light hole. Take the second Allen key from the box's top layer. This is a T6 Torx. Use this to remove the four bolts behind the covers and the grip. Now, this is just for the Pocket 4K. You'll need the smallest Allen key from the box to remove the two small bolts just above the lens mount. You can now remove the plastic cover. And underneath, there are two final bolts to remove using the T6 Torx Allen key. The Pocket 6K is slightly different here. First, remove the lens cap to expose the four bolts around the outside of the lens mount. The second smallest Allen key is for removing these. With these removed, you can take this plastic cover off and then reinstall the cap. Use this small Phillips head screwdriver to remove the two bolts above the lens mount. That will allow you to remove this smaller plastic cover from the top of the camera. Finally, there's two T6 Torx bolts to remove from this top section. Using the scalpel knife again, remove the sticker from the base of the camera. This is a little tricky to do without damaging the sticker, but you don't need to worry too much about keeping it anyway.
Underneath that sticker, you'll find four Phillips head bolts, which need to be removed with the smaller Phillips screwdriver in your kit. Back on the T6 Torx Allen key again, to remove the four bolts holding this black metal part around the camera's quarter inch thread. Now place all of the bolts and panels you've removed so far into a small container or bowl, which we'll be coming back to later. So you'll need to remember that this is container one. Gently, slowly separate the two halves evenly. When the gap is large enough, insert the flat end of the plastic spudger here and gently twist it to unplug this ribbon cable connection. This part is very delicate and should not require much force to disconnect it. This should allow the two halves of the camera to separate. Place the screen side of the camera somewhere safe while we work on this half. Now, this circuit board is delicate and sensitive to static electricity. So while removing these bolts, you must not touch any part of the circuitry. Hold the camera by the plastic frame for the next steps. We'll now use the largest Allen key with the Phillips head to remove the bolts from the main circuit board, starting with this bolt, which holds the sensor's ribbon cable in place. Grab a second container or bowl for these circuit board bolts. Next, remove the four other exposed bolts surrounding this circuit board. Remember to be careful not to touch the circuitry. Add them to your second container. Before we can remove the final bolt in the circuit board, we'll need to disconnect the ribbon cables. These ribbon cables are very delicate and can be easy to tear or snap, so handle these especially carefully. Use the flat end of the plastic spudger to unlock its connection. The locks on these cables are also extremely thin and delicate, and they only need a very small amount of pressure to lift them. The best method to safely pull the ribbon cables out of their connections is to use the sharp end of the plastic spudger underneath the cable and place one finger on top to gently pull the cable out. The final bolt in the circuit board is located beneath this ribbon cable. Gently hold the cable out of the way while removing this bolt. Now again, use the same technique with the flat end of the plastic spudger to open the locks on all six ribbon cables connected to the circuit board. Similar to when disconnecting the ribbon cables, use the sharp end of the plastic spudger behind this power connector, except this connector has to be lifted up to be disconnected. The sensor connector also lifts off vertically and is best removed by giving the flat end of the plastic spudger a gentle twist underneath the top left corner, like this. Finally, disconnect the rest of the ribbon cables, again by placing the sharp end of the plastic spudger underneath the cable, and with one finger above, gently pull the cable out of its socket. Remember not to touch the delicate circuit board here. Now, to remove the circuit board, it's important that you hold the board only by the edges. Gently wiggle the board to loosen the connectors out of their slots on the left. Lift the right-hand side of the board up slightly and pull the board out to the right. Ensure that none of the ribbon cables are caught on the board while removing it. Next up, we need to remove the camera's internal steel frame from the plastic body. Start with the Phillips Allen key to remove the bolt beneath this ribbon cable here. Start to add these bolts from this steel frame into a third container for later. Then there are four T6 Torx bolts to be removed. The final bolt here is a small Phillips head holding the fan's cable in place. Now we'll disconnect the 12 volt input cable using the flat end of the plastic spudger. The cable lifts off of the power circuit board in this direction. Unplug the fan's connector in the same direction. The Pocket 4K also has one hex bolt inside the quarter inch thread on top of the camera. 
You'll need to remove this with the second smallest Allen key before you can take the steel frame out of the camera. On the Pocket 6K, you'll also have to remove the fan now. Use the largest Phillips head Allen key to remove these three bolts. The Pocket 4K's fan cannot be removed yet. Sometimes the fan comes out pretty easily, but other times it can get a little stuck. Your fan may need a little push upwards, levering here with the plastic spudger. The final bolt holding the Pocket 6K's steel frame in place is located here, just beneath the quarter inch thread. Remove that with the T6 Torx Allen key. The next step for both cameras is to remove the steel frame. Just lift the top section and then pull the frame upwards. Several ribbon cables pass through this steel frame and can get caught, so watch them closely. To remove the fan from the frame of the Pocket 4K, remove these five bolts with the small Phillips head screwdriver. Keep this plastic cover, bolts and the fan in a fourth container. Finally, we can remove the four Phillips bolts holding the black metal part around the camera's quarter inch thread. Use the largest Phillips Allen key here. Threading the Allen key through the two small holes at the bottom of the steel frame makes this step easier. Replace that black metal part with the tilt hinge for our display. Ensure you bolt it on the correct way around, so the larger slope is on the back, like this. Reinstall the four bolts to secure the new tilt hinge into place. If you're modding a Pocket 4K, you need to reinstall the fan now. Slide the heatsink fins through the hole first, and the rubber gasket around the fan should slot into the shaping of the steel frame. Use the same five Phillips bolts from your fourth container with the small Phillips screwdriver. Now we'll place the steel frame back into the camera enclosure. Tuck the frame underneath the ribbon cables at the bottom of the camera and then carefully pull this ribbon cable through this gap and this ribbon cable through this gap. We need to ensure the black power cable isn't trapped behind this frame too. Use the sharp end of the plastic spudger to gently pull this cable through. The ribbon cable at the top right can also get stuck behind the steel frame, so just gently push it out of the way. When all ribbon cables are showing through correctly, you can push the steel frame back into place. Now we'll use the bolts from the third container to secure this frame. Remember, the Pocket 6K used a long silver bolt here, just below the quarter inch thread. Then move this ribbon cable out of the way to reinstall the fan. Use the largest Phillips Allen key for the three fan bolts. Now, the same again for both cameras, we'll add the five remaining bolts from our third container. Start with the small Phillips head screw at the top right of the frame, beneath this ribbon cable. Then add the other four bolts with the T6 Torx Allen key. Take the fan's connector and plug it back into the power circuit board. Then use the small Phillips screwdriver to tighten its cable clip down. The black 12 volt power cable that we unplugged earlier also has a bolted cable clip, similar to the fan's cable clip. Use the small Phillips screwdriver to remove that clip from the cable. Be careful not to lose the tiny bolt. It can be tricky to remove it from the clip part.
When that's removed, tuck this black power cable further into the steel frame so it's out of the way. Now you'll need this contact pin part for the V-mount battery input. Remove this elastic band and attach the clip part from the old power cable onto this one. Before connecting the cable, you just need to thread the wire through this hole of the silver assembly plate and make sure you thread the cable through in the same direction shown. Now, this cable can be tricky to align and connect properly, so just be patient and gentle. It can be easier if you bend the cable 90 degrees, about one centimeter from the connection, like this. Align the connector carefully and give it a gentle press so that it clicks into place. Add the tiny bolt to the cable clip and screw it into place with the small Phillips screwdriver. Even with the clip, the connector can be pulled out easily, so be careful not to accidentally tug it. Tuck the power cable into the frame so it exits through this gap. Reinstall the main circuit board by tucking the bottom edge beneath the ribbon cables. Then use the sharp end of the plastic spudger to gently pull the other ribbon cables over the top of the circuit board. Remember, handle the main circuit board only by its edges. Don't touch any of the circuitry. You should end up with nine cables ready to connect to this side of the circuit board. Once that's done, you need to press the board to the left so the connectors enter their slots on the side of the camera. You should see the threads line up behind each of the bolt holes. Next, reconnect the ribbon cables. Start with the sensor ribbon here, marked main. This connector is quite delicate. Gently press it into place. It should click. Now with the thinner, more delicate ribbon connectors, carefully line them up with their slots. Ensure the lock is in the upright open position and push the end of the cable into the slot. These cables should require almost no pressure to slide back into their connections. And the ends can easily bend if forced. So be sure to get the end of the cable correctly aligned to the opening. The power connector pushes down onto the circuit board and should clip into place like this. Before connecting the last ribbon cable at the bottom right, reinstall the bolt underneath it. Use the bolts from your second container with the largest Phillips Allen key. Then reconnect that final ribbon cable. Now reinstall the five remaining bolts into the circuit board with the metal security bracket over the main sensor connector. When moving this assembly to work on the next part, hold the power cable and silver plate to prevent tugging it out of the power circuit board. Now we'll remove the screen from the other half of the camera enclosure. Remove these eight bolts with the small Phillips screwdriver and keep them in a new second container. Disconnect the three ribbon cables from this section using the flat end of the plastic spudger. Gently open the locks of all three first. And with the same method we used earlier, slide the sharp end of the plastic spudger underneath this ribbon cable. And with one finger on top, gently pull the cable from its connector. This ribbon cable is also glued here, so just gently, slowly peel it away from the steel plate. This second ribbon cable features a circular hole, ideal for the sharp end of the plastic spudger, to pull the connector out. The final ribbon cable here has handles on either side, which we can carefully push against to remove it. Now lift the steel plate from this corner and carefully pull it away. 
without catching the third ribbon cable in this hole. Now to remove the screen, you'll need a hairdryer. Set it to the hottest temperature option and begin by heating the top and left edges of the display for about 30 seconds. This will begin to soften the glue holding the edges of the screen. After about 30 seconds, it should be just a little too hot to touch, so be careful. Use the flat end of the plastic spudger to peel the screen away from the enclosure. The thickness of this tool is enough so you don't need to do any prying or levering motions. Prying or using leverage could put too much pressure on one small area of the display. Be gentle, patient, and if the tool isn't removing the screen easily, just heat the display for another 15 seconds. Once the top and left sides of the screen are separated, begin heating the right and lower edges. These edges will probably already be warm, so begin by heating for about 20 seconds. Again, apply heat for another 15 seconds if the screen isn't peeling from the glue easily. Ensure you're using the flat edge of the plastic spudger, because again, too much pressure in one area may easily crack your glass screen. While the screen is warm, use the alcohol cleaning pad straight away to clean the remaining glue from the screen more easily. The glue should come off fairly easily, but some areas can be difficult. Patience is the key here. The next step is probably the most difficult, and one where you'll need to be especially careful to avoid permanent damage to your camera. Place this half of the camera enclosure this way up, as we'll be cutting a small section of the plastic away to make room for the display's ribbon cable to exit the camera body. Take the scalpel knife included in the kit and be careful to hold the knife firmly by the handle. We will need to apply pressure through the upper back section of the knife and it can be easy to slip, so hold it tightly. Hold the camera enclosure far away from the cutting area here and cut with the knife facing away from your other hand to avoid injury if you slip. We need to slice off this alignment ridge which runs along this edge as shown by this line. Slice off small sections at a time. Be patient and careful. If you try to push too deep into the plastic with the knife, it can become stuck. The best method here is to try to shave off smaller layers. When that's done, you want this edge from the shoulder strap loop to be flat like this. This will ensure the ribbon cable is flat and not being clamped with too much pressure. Now we'll return to the other half of the camera enclosure. Place the aluminium plate like this and place the back half of the camera underneath here. Make sure that this ribbon cable for the buttons is on top of the aluminium plate, not trapped beneath it. Remember not to tug on the power cable at all. Give it plenty of slack while assembling things here. Press the aluminium panel into the screen's old place and be sure that it's in the same orientation as shown here. Now take the steel back panel and place it on top of the aluminium plate in this orientation. The power cable must pass through the large opening on the left and the ribbon cable on the right must be placed on top, not underneath the steel panel. Stick this ribbon cable back into its original adhesive area. Now use the eight small bolts from your second container to reinstall this steel plate. Use the small Phillips screwdriver for these bolts. The final two bolts hold this steel part from your second container in place. Next, we're going to connect the ribbon cables. Remember to handle these very gently First, align this cable to its connector and carefully slide it in. Gently press its locking lever down using the flat end of the plastic spudger. Now take this ribbon cable assembly included in the mod kit. First, hold the smaller ribbon cable out of the way while we reconnect the larger cable. The pins must be facing down in this orientation while gently lifting this connection out of the way 
align and push our ribbon cable into its connection. Slide it all the way in and gently press the locking lever down. Then we'll connect the smaller cable. Fold the end over 90 degrees so it aligns with its connector. You will need to check the length compared to the connector to fold this cable in the right place. Gently press the locking lever down. Now we can reassemble the camera. Without tugging on the power cable at all, align the two halves, but leave a small gap. We need this gap so we can plug this connector back in. Use the flat end of the plastic spudger, move our display ribbon cable out of the way without pulling on it, and gently press the connector into place. This connector can sometimes be difficult to align. You may need an even smaller gap between the two halves of the camera, which will bring the connection closer. This is another step that will require some patience, and please do not force this connector. This connector is delicate, and it does not require a lot of pressure. Once it is connected, you can press the back of the camera all the way into place. Pressing in this area where the connector is should apply additional pressure to the connection to keep it securely in place in use. Place the camera onto its front. Take the V-mount plate and insert the V-locking part. Release button through the hole on an angle like this before it should slot into its place. Gently thread the power input connector through this gap. Remember not to pull this cable too hard or it could disconnect from its connection inside the camera. Before inserting the power connector into its slot, take this black plastic panel included with the mod kit and with this side facing out and with the ridge end facing down into the camera, it should slot into the bottom of this gap in the metal plate. The battery contact pins should then slot into the gap alongside it. We're now going to use the bottom left five bolts from the mod kit. These five bolts go into these holes. Once tightened down, they actually clamp this V-mount panel to the aluminium plate inside the camera, which makes the V-mount extremely secure. To finish this V-mount plate off, we will need to add these two smaller bolts into the top and bottom holes of the battery contact pins. For these bolts, we need to use the additional Allen key, which was inside the larger parts tray in the mod kit. Next is the display. Take the display enclosure from the mod kit box and the scalpel knife. Use this to lift the edges of the protective paper to expose the adhesive for the screen. Peel the protective paper, leaving the adhesive strips. Now take the LCD screen from your camera and the display back panel from the mod kit box. We're just going to use this to prop the LCD screen up to make this screen install easier. Make sure that the larger border on the display is on the left hand side. Now with the hinge gap at the bottom of the display enclosure, carefully align the screen's borders with the inside of the enclosure. There should be an equal gap on all four sides. Once the screen has made contact with the adhesive, you should not attempt to remove it. So take your time and make sure it's aligned perfectly before dropping the enclosure down onto the screen. If the borders on the left and right are way out, you're probably holding the display enclosure upside down. Make sure the screen is firmly attached. The adhesive will take hours to cure properly, but we can continue the assembly. In the mod kit, find the small plastic bag with these four hinge tension inserts. There are two thick and two thin. For this step, take the two thick ones out and insert them into these gaps, with the rounded side facing up and the rounded corner fitting into the edges. Push them all the way down with the flat edge of the plastic spudger, and make sure they're pushed all the way into the edges, so there's an empty gap in the center. For the Pocket 4K only, you'll now need to reinstall the top cover, slipping it over the tilt hinge on an angle like this. The ribbon cable should sit flat behind it. And with the hinge section at the bottom here, slot the screen down onto the tilt hinge. Place the camera down this way up so we can connect the ribbon cables. Using the same method as earlier, 
Connect this ribbon cable. Open the lock on the connector before sliding the cable in and remember to be gentle with these delicate parts. Now for the smaller ribbon cable, you'll need to find the small plastic adapter in the mod kit box. Open the locks on both connectors and insert the ribbon cable from the screen first with the adapter upside down. Ensure the ribbon cable is inserted all the way and gently lock that side's connector. Then insert the small ribbon cable from the camera into the other side of this adapter. The pins on the ribbon cable should be facing up when connecting this one so both ribbon cables pins are flat against the plastic board of the adapter. Next, make sure the ribbon cable is aligned to the slot at the bottom of the display enclosure. It may not naturally stay in that slot just yet, but we can make sure it's in position when tightening the display back panel down. The ribbon cables in this area will need to sit quite flat against the back of the screen for the back panel to attach without damaging any of these cables, so gently fold the cables in a couple of spots. Now add the other two thinner hinge tension inserts on top of the hinge bar here. The display back panel will compress them down into place when we attach it. Place the display back panel with the gap at the bottom for the hinge. Now we'll use the remaining 8 bolts to secure this back panel. When tightening the bottom right two bolts, make sure that the ribbon cable is aligned to its slot and has a little bit of slack rather than being completely tightened so it isn't being pulled when the display is at various angles. If there is not enough slack, gently pull the ribbon cable from the display side not the camera side. The lower central two bolts control the tension of the display tilt, so adjust them according to your preference. Try to tighten both bolts to the same degree, rather than just one of the bolts being far tighter than the other. Before bolting the camera enclosure back together, you need to test the display and camera to ensure everything is working normally. Add a V-mount battery and check that the mount locks onto the battery securely. Then switch the camera on and check that the screen switches on, displays the camera settings normally and that touch control is functioning. Check that the menu and other buttons on the back of the camera work and that the menu displays and works normally with touch control. With the V-mount battery attached, the voltage should display between 12 to 16.8 volts. Tap on the battery icon to toggle this information. 16.8 volts indicates a full battery, and most V-mount batteries will deplete at about 13 volts. If you are experiencing any issues with the display working or touch sensitivity working, it's likely that one of the connections between the LCD and the camera is too loose. This can happen quite often. So if this has happened, I'd recommend taking a rest and coming back later. If you do need to troubleshoot, you will need to start by removing the back of the display to disconnect and reconnect the ribbon cables there. If this doesn't work, then it's most likely to be the LCD ribbon cable connections inside the camera. Because the camera is not bolted together, you'll only need to disconnect the cables in the back of the display, remove the display enclosure and open the camera disconnecting the ribbon cable at the top of the camera enclosure to regain access to the LCD's connections. Remember to be patient and delicate with these parts if you do need to return to reconnect them. And again, it can help to return to do this job after a rest. Now, if you're ready to reassemble a Pocket 6K only, start by finding this smaller top cover part. This needs to slot down behind the tilt hinge here. It has two small clips that have to slide in beneath the back half of the camera enclosure before it can tilt into position like this. Use the two small bolts from your first container with the small Phillips head screwdriver to secure this small plastic panel into place. The small bolts go into the two outermost holes through the small plastic part while two of the six larger T6 Torx bolts in your first container fill the two innermost holes in this area. Now this is relevant for both the Pocket 4K and 6K. Reinstall the four remaining bolts into these positions. 
there'll actually be two bolts left over from the Pocket 4K install here. You won't be needing those. This is another step for the Pocket 6K only, reinstalling the cover for the mount. Remove the body cap and slide the cover back over the camera. Install the four hex head bolts with the second smallest hex allen key. Put the body cap back on, and then we have one step unique to the Pocket 4K. Inside your first container, you should have two matching small hex head bolts for this top cover. Use the smallest hex shaped allen key to reinstall these. The last few steps are the same for both cameras. Insert the small white rubber diffuser for the tally light, and then stick the transparent tally light window on. Add the same sticky panel at the bottom right to cover that bolt hole, and then add the rubber grip back on, starting from this edge and wrapping it around. The final step for both camera models is to add the last parts to the base of the camera. There are four small silver bolts in your second container, which need to screw into these four holes using the small Phillips screwdriver. Insert the black metal cover into this space, and use the final four black bolts to reinstall it using the T6 Torx Allen key. Finally, you can add the original Blackmagic sticker onto the base of the camera. This isn't essential, of course, as some of them do lose their stickiness. Once that's done, you just need to test to be sure that the camera is fully functional again. Add the V-mount battery and an LPE6 battery separately too, to check the screen's function with touch control. You'll also want to mount a lens to check that the image is appearing on screen and responding normally. So. Congratulations on completing the PodMod install on your own. I hope you enjoy using your modified camera. If you do experience any glitches or issues through the install process or in use, please send an email to me, ollie at podtech.shop. I'd also love to hear from you if you do enjoy using the modified camera. The sole goal of this project has been to improve the interface and handling of these cameras, whether it's for commercial work or experimental filmmaking. Let me know if the mod kit achieves that goal for you and what could be changed or improved. I'd like to say a huge thanks to you for supporting this project. I can't wait to see how you use your modified camera for your work.